All right, now we're going to continue on with this problem. So we are ready for part E. And part E is asking for what numbers x is f of x equal to 0. So for this problem, they are giving us basically a y value. They're saying when the y value is 0, they want us to find what would be the x that would go with that. So as we're looking um, at our graph, wherever it would cross the x-axis is where we have points where our y value is 0. So those are all the y's of 0. And the x values that go with that would be 0 from this first point. And then from the second point, our x value is 4. And from the third point, our x value is 6. So our x's would be 0, 4, and 6. For part f, let's erase this off of here so we can start afresh. For part f, it says for what numbers x is f of x less than 0. So they want to know what do the x's equal. Well, here again, remember what your notation means. f of x is just a fancy way of saying y. So we want to look to see where are the y values less than 0. Well, a lot of students automatically go to this point right here and say, well, this is a y value of less than 0, so 2 must be my answer. And that is incorrect because we're missing out on some points. Think about, isn't this point right here the y value less than 0? And this point right here, the y value is less than 0? This point right here, the y value is less than 0? And here, and here, and here, and here. We have a whole bunch of places where the y value is less than 0. Actually, it would be everything from here all the way over to here. All of these have y values that are less than 0. So this would be an interval of x values. Starting here where x is 0 and going all the way over to where x is 4. Now, this is an interval, not a point then the only way that we would know that is in the context. So this would be the interval from 0 to 4, uh, x values would have y values of less than 0. That one's probably a little bit more difficult to think about than anything else that we've done so far. Okay, part G, let's look at this. It says, what is the domain of F? Well, now keep in mind, what does domain mean? It is the set of all x's in a function. Well, our function here is this graph, and there are an infinite number of x values here on this graph. There are, you know, tons of them in between even the x values that are labeled. But if we think about reading from left to right, our x values start right over here with an x of negative 4. And then they go all the way over to this point right here with an x value of 6. So our domain starts at negative 4 and ends at 6. And because the endpoints are included, negative 4 is a valid x value and so is 6. We put brackets around there to indicate that those endpoints are included. All right, now for our range. Our last one here we're going to have time for in this video is the range. So when we talk about range, we're talking about y values. So that y-axis goes from bottom to top. So if we were to look, our lowest possible y value starts here at negative 2. And then we have y values all the way up to this highest y of 3. So our range would start at negative 2. Remember, these are y values. And we would have every single y value all the way up to a y value of 3. Because the ends are valid points, we would put that in brackets.